ceremonial photo of this building and proceed to do the commissioning. Mr. Yusuf, you're yours. Amen. 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 His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia for his continuous support to the work of the ministry and for accepting once again to commission this new head office complex of the Lands Commission. This will be the third time this year His Excellency the Vice President is commissioning projects for the ministry. Having commissioned on 2nd May 2024 the reconstructed Apiati community which he was very instrumental in its reconstruction. And on 8th August 2024, the first gold refinery in the history of our country, constructed through a public-private partnership, which he also personally led a charge to see to its completion. Mr. Vice President, you will recall your unannounced visit to the Lands Commission in February 2018, and the interest you have shown in the affairs of the Commission since then to ensure that we deliver a land administration that is fit for purpose. The Ministry and the Commission are eternally grateful to you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, an effective land administration is imperative to the economic advancement of every nation. Our quest to transform our national economy to bring about the much needed development and prosperity cannot happen if we fail to anchor an effective land administration in our country. It is for this reason that since the Second Republican Constitution, the Lands Commission has been established as an independent constitutional organ with the mandate to, among others, manage public lands on behalf of government and assist in the registration of titles to land throughout the country. The merging of the various state agencies hitherto performing functions relating to land, such as the Soviet Department, the Land Valuation Board, and the Land Title Registry, with the then Lands Commission, pursuant to the Lands Commission Act 208, Act 767, was meant to harmonize the administration of land in, in our country. Unfortunately, due to the absence of a befitting office complex, these agencies, which had become divisions of the Commission, continued to operate from separate offices, posing a great challenge to the harmonization of land administration. Today, with this eight-story complex, the Lands Commission, with all its divisions and their staff, will be housed in this building, providing a conducive atmosphere for work. Distinguished guests, this ultra-modern edifice stands as a testament to the commitment of the Akufuado Baumia government to create an efficient, transparent, and accessible land administration system as a pivot for economic growth and development. It will undoubtedly elevate the standard of land services delivery, ensuring that the Lands Commission and allied agencies provide top-notch services to Ghanaians and all those in need of land administration services. In addition to this office complex, earlier this year, I commissioned on behalf of government a new regional office for the Greater Accra Regional Lands Commission, and an office complex for the Tema District Office is scheduled to be completed in the first quarter of next year. We are also working to construct 12 new regional offices for the Commission across the country to provide a conducive and congenial working environment for staff of the Commission and serve as motivation for an efficient and for an efficient land service delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, aside these infrastructural developments, the Ministry, working through the Lands Commission under the outstanding leadership of President Akufuado and Vice President Baumia has prioritized initiatives and reforms that drive transformation in the land sector. We have established six fully digitized offices for the six new regions of Ahafu, Bono East, North East, Oti, 
Savannah, and Western North. This has saved residents of these regions expenses and time involved in traveling long distances to assess the services of the Lands Commission. Under the land administration reforms, we are pursuing an aggressive digitization agenda which is geared towards promoting a robust land administration system that ensures security, facilitates economic growth, and supports resource development. The successful migration of some operations of the Commission onto the digital environment through the Enterprise Land Information System is proof of our progress. Today, individuals can conduct searches in the Commission's records remotely at any time of the day. We have also rolled out the electronic property mass appraisal system, enabling revaluation in several metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies to improve, to improve revenue collection. Additionally, we have fostered collaborative partnerships with experts from the private sector. Through these partnerships, we are advancing towards a comprehensive land administration reform, which will strengthen the capacity of the Lands Commission to address current and future challenges effectively. Drones are being employed in surveying and mapping to produce accurate georeference and efficient orthophoto maps to support land title registration and base maps for development of local planning schemes. We are also aggressively implementing the Lands Act 2020, Act 1036, which we worked so hard to pass after almost a two decade delay. We held a national symposium on this piece of legislation, which was graciously opened by His Excellency the Vice President, and we have gone around the country in the last four years to disseminate this seminal law to the ordinary Ghanaian. Working with the Office of Attorney General and Ministry of Justice, as well as other stakeholders, we have finalized the much-anticipated legislative instrument, which will operationalize most of the provisions of the Act, and we are hopeful that the next government God willing, the Baumia government will continue with the process to ensure the passage of this legislative instrument in the first meeting of the next parliament. Under government's urban redevelopment scheme, we are provided through a land swap arrangement, 504 one and two bedroom self-contained housing units with a school complex, a clinic, and a recreational area for the Ghana Police Service as well as office complexes for the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, the Ghana Airports Company Limited, and the Ghana Meteorological Agency to pave way for the redevelopment of the 80 acres of land between Stambik Heights and the Ministry of Defense. This, when completed, will be a smart, sustainable, and beautiful city within our capital city of Accra. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this office complex we commissioned today is a result of years of hard work between the Ministry and the Lands Commission. We thank the Chairman of the Lands Commission, Mr. Alex Quenu, and all members of the Commission. The very hard-working, highly professional, and astute Executive Secretary of the Commission, Mr. Benjamin Atta, and all past Chairpersons, Executive Secretaries, and members of the Commission whose work and dedication has seen to the completion of this building. To the staff of the commission, we salute you for your support throughout these years. It is our hope that this conducive environment will inspire excellence in your work and motivate you to contribute towards achieving the mission and vision of the commission. Your Excellency, the adverse consequences of ineffective, fraudulent, and weak land administration are dire. We must therefore work together to build an excellent land administration system that is well reformed once and for all for our country. It is in this light that I respectfully make these recommendations as the chairman of this government and of course my stewardship at the ministry comes to an end. Firstly, we must continue and complete the digitization and digitalization of the records and operations of the Lands Commission. The fourth industrial revolution is upon us and it is incontestable that we cannot develop without digitalization. We cannot continue to rely on manual, manual uh, information and expect the Lands Commission to deliver a seamless and robust land administration. We must therefore do all it takes to complete the digitalization effort. 
Secondly, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources must work with the Lands Commission to review the national land policy of 1999. Although still relevant, technological advancement and infrastructural developments have created new challenges that require reform to this policy. Two years ago, we started the process of reviewing this policy with the National Land Conference, the first of its kind in the history of our country, and the second consultative assembly on land since the coming into force of our national constitution. It is my hope that the ministry will continue the process to bring up to date our national land policy. Thirdly and finally, we must work together to pass the land regulations which have been finalized by the Office of the Attorney General. The Land Act 2020 provides a firm foundation to deal with the challenges of land administration, but we can only get the best out of the law if these regulations are passed to operationalize its provisions. Yes, disappearances of files, title certificates, indentures, amongst others. It will also prevent delays in land service delivery and ultimately result in a robust, efficient, transparent, responsive and orderly land administration. This is the vision of the government and the transformation we have brought to the Lands Commission in the last eight years is a testament of our commitment to this cause. Ladies and gentlemen, it is said that even with the best infrastructure and technological systems in place, it is our dedicated and capable staff who are essential to achieving our goals. And that is why we have invested in building the human resource capacity of the Commission to ensure that they deliver efficient services across the country. What is clear to me is that as we try to move to the next level, a lot of these initiatives that the Lands Commission is implementing in the context of digitalization and other um, innovations is done in partnership with the private sector. And therefore, it is very important for the Lands Commission and also other agencies to have the revenues that will help um, pay um, whatever is required under these private-public partnerships. And this is part of the reason in that if you look at what I'm planning to do, is to move about 3% of GDP of government expenditure from the public sector to the private sector. And that is about 30 billion Ghana cities annually in that context. And when we get this done, which we, we hope to get done in the first budget, uh, that frees up a lot of fiscal space uh, for all agencies. And I, um, for example, will want to see the Minister for Finance initially, even before we do this, give the Lands Commission this IGF space needed uh, by increasing the IGF to at least 50% so that we can, we can have these partnerships with the private sector. But my goal ultimately is to remove all capping once we do uh, where, where, where we are going. Uh, because once we take 30 billion from the budget to the private sector, then the, the requirements for revenue to fund that 30 billion also comes down. And so that the need for the capping also comes down. And so that is the vision with which I am, I am working and going to implement with, with, with the move uh, towards leveraging the public private sector to provide a lot more services. So we, we, are, we, are, we are on, on course to, to get this done. To this end, I urge the management of the Lands Commission to continue to invest in staff training, capacity building, and motivation, as these are fundamental to sustaining the gains we have made. Our staff must feel empowered and equipped to meet the evolving demands of a modern land administration system. The administrator of two lands edifice, which provides a conducive working environment for staff of the head office of, of, of the commission, of, as well as office of the administrator of two lands, will improve efficiency and effectiveness in land service delivery. I am confident 
that this office will spare on the commission to work towards a robust land administration. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this building we are commissioning today is the result of years of dedicated work by several people. And it is fitting that we acknowledge all those who have worked on this project from its inception to its completion. I want to acknowledge the exceptional contributions of the current members and management of the Lands Commission, as well as past and present executive secretaries who played instrumental roles in making this vision a reality. To survey Dr. Odami Labi, Surveyor Dr. Enim Odami, Surveyor Al Haji Suleimana Mahama, Surveyor James Datson, and our current Executive Secretary, Surveyor Benjamin Arthur. Your dedication and leadership have left a lasting impact on the Lands Commission and indeed on our nation. And to all the contractors, the consultants, and the supervisors, we say thank you. In a special way, let me thank the indefatigable Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, the man I call the bulldozer minister, for his exemplary leadership and dedication which has seen to the completion of this building. As I always say, he just gets the work done. It's always such a pleasure working on him on projects. You give him an assignment and he gets it done. And I'm very, very, very grateful for, for his approach to work. Ladies and gentlemen, as we commission this new head of his building, let us remember that this is only a step towards a bigger vision. This building stands as a testament to our collective commitment to modernizing land administration in Ghana. It is a symbol of progress, an investment in our future, and a promise to the people of Ghana. Our vision for land administration reform in Ghana is clear, and I urge the ministry and the members and management of the Lands Commission to ensure that these reforms take off without delay. A comprehensive reform agenda is critical for addressing the current challenges and ensuring that our land sector remains resilient and responsive to the needs of Ghanaians. Together, let us work, let us continue to work towards a Ghana where land services are accessible, transparent, and efficient. A Ghana where our land administration system supports sustainable development, economic prosperity, and social harmony. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor to declare the head office of the Lands Commission duly commissioned. May it serve as the cornerstone of progress and prosperity for our nation, embodying the values of diligence, transparency, and service to our people. May God bless the Lands Commission. May God bless our homeland, Ghana. And may God bless us all. Thank you very much for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together once more for a leader of great progress, the Vice President of our Republic, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Baumia. In our journey toward providing efficient, transparent, and accessible land services for the good people of Ghana. Your Excellency, Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this commissioning marks a significant milestone made possible by the support and dedication of many, especially the Honorable Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abu Jinapo, MP for Damango, under whose leadership this has reached its successful completion. His relentless efforts to ensure the Commission completes this facility has been invaluable. The completion of this office facility as part of the Lands Commission's journey towards efficiency and excellence is very timely as it ties into our effort at strengthening the merger of the four agencies as one Lands Commission. 
for a very long time, the Lands Commission Head Office has shared the same facility with the Greater Accra Regional Lands Commission. As it were, effective today, the tenancy agreement the Head Office has with the Greater Accra Region of the Lands Commission has expired and is not renewable. For the first time since the merger of the land sector agencies into the current Lands Commission, the Corporate Head Office of the Lands Commission, together with the four divisional directors and the entire staff of the head office to celebrate our achievements today. I want to express my sincere gratitude to all the former executive secretaries who supervised these projects during the Athena. Our deputy executive secretaries, the board management, the developer, Mrs. Not Shell Limited, the Lands Commission project monitoring team, and all staff of the commission. Their dedication has been very instrumental in making this a reality. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, the journey to transform land administration in Ghana continues. This new facility is both a beacon of our progress and a call to action. We are committed to ensuring that land is managed in a way that benefits every Ghanaian and promotes sustainable development. On behalf of the Lands Commission, I formally welcome you, Your Excellency, to digital address G4018-2866 of the Olisogu Obasanjo Way and the Kesliheifor Street Airport Commercial Area, Accra, the official headquarters of the Lands Commission, which we are commissioning today. Thank you for accepting to be a part of this momentous occasion. We look forward to continuing our work with renewed energy and dedication. Long live the Lands Commission. Thank you very much. Take a ceremonial photo of this building and proceed to do the commissioning. Mr. Yusuf, we're yours. Awm billahi sallamilla alayhi mina shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thumma salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Thank you. 